The most luxury hotel in Disney World isn't owned by Disney at all. And is it worth that $1,000 and up price tag? Let's tour the Four Seasons Resort Orlando. Yes, friends, we've made it. We are here at the Four Seasons, a triple A five diamond hotel located on Walt Disney World property near Fort Wilderness in Port Orleans. The closest park to this hotel is gonna be Magic Kingdom, but it is located in the super expensive, super private Golden Oak neighborhood where people actually live in multi-million dollar houses on Disney property. Four Seasons is a five diamond award rated property in Central Florida named the number one resort by US News and World Report, as well as ranked in the top five in the entire state of Florida. TripAdvisor has also put this one in the top 25 luxury resorts in the entire nation. On top of that, there is a rooftop restaurant here called Kappa that is a Michelin star restaurant. Now we are hosted for this day, so thank you very much to Four Seasons for having us. This hotel is very expensive, but does offer true luxury in a way that Disney World hotels do not. There are accommodations here, including a golf and sports club, water park, a spa, six restaurants and bars, and more. We are going to see absolutely everything that Four Seasons has to offer. I am so unbelievably excited for us to do this staycation. First things first, let's talk a little bit about Four Seasons. Four Seasons currently operates more than 100 hotels and resorts worldwide, and Travel and Leisure Magazine and Zagat Survey rank the hotel chain's properties among the top luxury hotels around the world. If you're familiar with Disney hotels, you might know that the most luxurious is typically considered to be Grand Floridian, but that hotel is not really a true luxury experience like this is. Grand Floridian is something we call Disney luxury. You're paying luxury prices for some nice stuff as Disney standards go, but you're not gonna get true luxury. You're not gonna get it in the terms of service or the amenity. Our stay at Four Seasons is going to be a true luxury experience. You can compare this video where I tour the Four Seasons to my video where I stayed at Grand Floridian to get an understanding of what I mean. It's very, very different experiences for relatively similar prices. We arrived early morning on our check-in day and we were able to inform Four Seasons of what time we expected our arrival to be. Despite the fact that it was 8.30 a.m., they still had our room ready by the time we arrived at the hotel. We arrived here at the front port cashier and passed off our bags to Bell Services where they took it right up to our room. Uh, we were dropped off by Uber, but parking is available as valet only as well. We didn't even make it up to our room and instead headed off to Epcot to go ahead and film another video, the Snack Around the World Challenge. To get to the Disney parks from Four Seasons, Four Seasons does offer a shuttle service. Uh, this shuttle operates on a varying schedule. They'll give you a little schedule. You can always text the number they give you and ask if you have any questions at all about uh, the way the shuttle works or anything like that. But there is this little Disney transportation circle right around here. Uh, and the bus will pick you up. It is a luxury bus, so very fancy. Uh, Fry Bucket and I took it on over to Epcot yesterday and the whole trip took about 30 minutes with a stop at Magic Kingdom. So about 15 minutes to the first stop, another 15 to the second stop. Typically the buses will operate between Magic Kingdom and Epcot in the Four Seasons and Animal Kingdom Hollywood Studios in the Four Seasons. They do not come nearly as often as Disney official buses, so that's something to certainly keep in mind. And the front desk let us know that in most cases, people staying at the Four Seasons use a mix of rideshare and the shuttles to get to and from the parks. One thing to note is that the drop-off for the Four Seasons shuttle is at bus drop-off, not Disney bus drop-off. So really the only place that's going to affect you is going to be at Magic Kingdom, where drop-off will occur at the Transportation and Ticket Center, and you'll still have to monorail or ferry boat over to Magic Kingdom instead of getting dropped right outside the park gates like you would if you were taking a Disney bus. Um, our check-in went really smoothly. Check-in is at 4 p.m. Um, but of course, if you arrive early, you're welcome to check in a little early. If your room isn't ready, Bell Services can hold your bags and have them brought up to your room when your room is ready. We were given a room key that did have information on it, such as a phone number that we could text with anything we would need during our stay. Another thing that might be helpful when you are staying at Four Seasons is using the Four Seasons app. This is an app that you can just download from the App Store or the Play Store, and it's a fully it's like a Four Seasons app for all Four Seasons hotels, but you can input the information about your stay and then have access to information as well as being able to make requests, uh, chat directly with the front desk. You can even order in-room dining from the app. Okay, so we are in a standard two queen Four Seasons room. You can also get one king bed with a sofa bed and we do have a park view room. So you've got your door here. It does have um, both a door jam and a deadbolt. 
Uh, you also notice this placard that this is not your typical do not disturb sign. This is information about how to activate do not disturb, which you can actually do with this button here on the wall, this privacy button. You can also mark the make up room button if you want your room made up and housekeeping will come by. There is twice daily housekeeping here at Four Seasons that comes by and make sure your room is spick and span for you. This is a light switch, even though it doesn't look like it. Um, so you can hit on or off as you're entering or exiting the room, save some energy, and then you enter into this little hallway kind of deal. And we will head right and check out the closet and the bathroom, but first we gotta check out the room. The Four Seasons rooms are 500 square feet, so fairly large for standard hotel rooms, uh, which is to be expected of a hotel with this kind of price tag and level of luxury. All right, so we are gonna start directly to the right when you come into the room with your coffee bar, which is beautifully illuminated, has a mirror back wall, and on this, you'll see that we have an Nespresso, which is obviously a much fancier coffee machine that you typically see in hotels. Also, you're provided Callaway Blue spring water. There is a wine opener for your use, as well as a ice bucket that they have stocked for us with ice. And if you need more ice, you can literally just text uh, the number they give you at check-in and that's on your room key and they will bring you more ice. We also have espresso cups, mugs, um, and plenty of fixins for your coffee, including your little coffee pods. There's this little guide to the different blends that are offered here and a little instructions on how to work your Nespresso as well. Also provided is this private bar menu and this shows you what you can have your private in-room bar stocked with uh, as well as some pricing. If you do want to opt to stock your private bar, you can just contact in-room dining via the phone or the in-room iPad and they will make sure that your room gets stocked with the items that you'd like. There is this fridge in the room. Uh, which is just a mini bar fridge, uh, good for leftovers, or if there's anything that they do stock your room with, they would put anything that needs to be chilled in your fridge up here. In this other cabinet, we have your in-room safe, which you can is programmable, and you can put your valuables in here, as well as some shelving. There is plenty of space under the private bar, bar with two skinny drawers, as well as two more cabinets for anything that might be stocked in your private bar or you could just use the space for your own purposes if you wanted to. Bed wise, two queen beds like I said, top of the line linens and sheet sets as well as pillows. There are these benches right on the end which are great. I love stuff like this for like getting ready in the morning um, and they're pretty comfortable. I'm gonna sit on one. I sat down on the ottoman. It's comfortable. I would put my shoes on here. Emma has fallen. <laughs> We're a little intimidated by the luxury here. This is much uh, <laughs> higher luxury. Something we say a lot when we talk about Grand Floridian is that it is luxury, but it's Disney luxury. It's something that feels approachable to people um, who may not be familiar with true luxury. Four Seasons is true luxury. There are aspects of this that feel unapproachable if you're not used to luxury, um, but obviously very, very, very nice. And uh, I would venture to say it's interesting that it costs the same amount to stay here as it does at Grand Floridian sometimes. The beds do have one of my favorite features on one side, which is a directional reading light. Turns on automatically when you open it up. I love this because when you're staying in a room with someone else, a lot of times you might not want to go to sleep when they do. You might want to read your book. And it's nice to have a more direct light instead of having to leave on a full lamp above the bed. I cannot express to you how badly I want to do bed science now, but that's not how we do things. Look at the beds. Also, we're all changing before we do bed science. We're all showering. And we're showering and changing, and we're not touching those beds until we do so. You can't put your dirty clothes on the bed. Between the beds, you've got ample floor space. They did provide slippers for us, um, which is awesome because that is just peak coziness. There are three bottles of water. They do know that there are three people staying here, so a lot of our amenities come in threes. Your TV remote is seated, is seated, <laughs> sitting right here. It also is a little note that says your bed and bath linen will be changed every third day. Place this on your bed to change it daily. So, you know, you can save the environment by holding off, but if you want that stuff changed, you can just place that on your bed. There's also a phone here, completely wireless, so you don't have to uh, stay nearby if you're talking on the phone. This lamp between the beds is very nice, <laughs> has a very nice base, and you turn it off with these buttons back here. Nope, that turns off different lights. You turn, <laughs> you turn it off somehow else. Oh, with this button, knob. It's a knob, it's dim, it dims, it's a dimmer. Something else you'll notice is that the there is another privacy button and makeup room button by the bed. So you forgot to press the button, you're going to take a nap, you can just tap it literally from bed. Also here we have the in-room little iPort. 
Um, and this is a great spot for like all your info needs and also to make requests. There's a hotel overview with tons of information about the hotel. You can make a request, um, which is pretty easy and specific. You can request the overnight shoe sign service, turn down service, room cleaning, whatever you might need. You can even just like come right in here and see a menu of amenities you can request. Um, and they will ha be brought to your room. Then dining wise, you've got your in-room dining menu. Of course, this is a not complimentary with your stay, but in-room dining is available 24 hours a day. And you've got your full menu here. It varies based on what time of day you're ordering. And then you also can come see the spa menu, which is pretty cool as well. So that's all right here. Um, just like at the touch of a little screen, you can do all of that. You can even chat with the front desk and uh, dim the brightness of it if you're using it in the middle of the night and it's blinding you in the eyes. This little packet also on the bedside table is a microfiber cloth um, for, I guess, wiping down any glass services you might. I am going to use it to clean my glasses. There is a big shelf for your use in the side table. It's a very large side table. And then a sizable drawer here that you can keep things. And there's even this giant flashlight in the drawer, um, which I think is probably useful for more emergencies than anything, but maybe if you're scared of the dark and you need to go to the bathroom, you don't wake somebody else up. That's in there. Some of the art in the room is behind one of these beds as well with these kind of geometric prints that are laid out very artfully on the wall. And you've got a little side table here, a little end table for use with this armchair here that does have an ornament and looks very comfortable, um, as well as for use on this side of the bed. You've also got this little um, booklet that is Discover Four Seasons Hotels, all about Four Seasons Hotels all over the world um, with photos and everything of what you can expect at them. I'm going to look through that later and dream about what it would be like to stay in those places. And there's Four Seasons Magazine, uh, which is similarly has a lot of information about Four Seasons and articles about it as well. I'm going to sit in the armchair to test comfort, but you've also got this floor lamp right behind the armchair that is controlled by the on off buttons by the door and by the bed. And also there is a specific button for this one if you like just want this lamp on. Chair science. Ah, it's not the most comfy chair. Oh no, it's actually pretty comfy. I spoke too soon. The base of it is very firm, but the back is very soft and it's making for a pleasing combination. And there's an ottoman. Now we have sunset happening, which is amazing. But um, let's take a look at the curtain situation. So we have this one privacy curtain, which is actually this like beautiful mesh that has like a shine to it. Like the mesh glistens in the light in a very exciting way. There's also full blackout curtains that cover the whole wall. When we came in, just because it was going to be a little later and they, they had drawn the curtains for us. Um, so they look very nice. If you have any requests about how you want your room made up, um, I'm sure you could place those and that they would be happy to oblige. We also have full wall of windows here, which shows out to our private balcony. Um, and we are going to head out there. It's a sliding door with two locks, a deadbolt and a bar lock. Now the balcony is totally private. It is full walls on either side. There's no privacy divider. It is an actual wall. And you've got these lovely two patio chairs as well as a table in the middle. Um, I've seen photos on the Four Seasons website where people requested like a fireworks service and you can get desserts served on your patio to watch fireworks because this is a park view room. In fact, many of the rooms at this hotel are park view rooms. Uh, other options that you can get are the Golden Oak view and the Lake view. Um, but you can see we do have a park view and I'll show you what you can see here as well as I can on the camera. So starting from the right, we actually have a view of the whole Four Seasons property that we're staying at all the way out to the golf course beyond that line of trees. Uh, this is the adults pool. We've got the family pool over there. These are the Four Seasons private residences. We'll talk a lot about everything you can see here tomorrow because tomorrow is our resort day and we will be experiencing Four Seasons to the fullest. Along the skyline is where you're gonna find the park. So if we look that way, you can see very clearly that's the contemporary and Bay Lake Tower. And just between you can see some spires peeking above the trees. That is Cinderella Castle. You can also see the top of the Tron canopy to the right of those buildings, as well as I think the spires of Space Mountain because we are on the Tomorrowland side of Disney World. Continuing on, there are some spires that you can see that are Grand Floridian there. And then if you go a little bit further, you see a beautiful sunset. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. And in the distance, there's a very, very bright speck of light. Right now there's bad weather in the area, but over there is Expedition Everest. You can see all the way to Animal Kingdom. 
And then continuing on a little bit closer, <laughs> I can actually see Blizzard Beach. I don't think you can, but I can. <laughs> Um, but a little bit closer, we've got the Swan and Dolphin, as well as Tower of Terror, where we can see Hollywood Studios. And even closer, we have Epcot, where we can see Spaceship Earth uh, silhouetted against the sky. So you can see all four parks from our room, from our balcony. Uh, tonight, fireworks are at 920. We will be able to see fireworks from our balcony, and we will certainly be doing that. But there are other places to watch fireworks from in this hotel as well, if you do not have a park view. Something else I really like about this balcony is there is this light. Um, there's just an outdoor patio light with a really nice ambient glow. I love this because a lot of hotels do not have lighting out on their patios. And so at night it's kind of dark to sit out there. So I love that you can just turn that on and enjoy a little bit of nighttime ambiance as you look out over all these beautiful water features. This room is so big. This is like the size of my living room. This is a little bigger than my living room. I think it's about the living room and, the half, and a half the kitchen. All right, so we have over here um, this kind of unit, which is where you will get, uh, probably where you will get part of your private bar stocked. That's what we believe is happening here. If you know what this is otherwise, you can tell us we're wrong and we'll accept that comment. But we're pretty sure it's where they would stock your private bar. And if you were to order any spirits for your room, that it would go right in there. Um, and it's a very nice piece of furniture. I like want this for my house. Okay, so um, right next to that little unit is sort of this desk space slash general table space. Um, it's got plenty of like room on top of it. And this table is sort of pushed up next to it, but there are drawers in here for any business work you wanna do. And there's some extra amenities in here, including envelopes and some stationery um, with the Four Seasons logo embedded in it and a uh, plug converter. So if you have any uh, international plug type that you need to plug into the wall, there is a converter in here for you to use. You've got these two sort of desk chairs that you can work in or use at your table here and a nice spacious circular table. Now, because we are hosted, we have been provided with this nice charcuterie board and some aquapana. However, um, you can actually get these things ordered to your room if you like as well through in-room dining or through setting up a specific like celebratory experience with the Four Seasons staff. There's another in-room telephone here. Uh, this one does have a cord um, and plenty of outlets in this room in general, including an ethernet port, um, which is wild, but plenty of outlets in general with USB ports included in them. Also on the desk is a Bose Bluetooth speaker, which is yours to use during your stay while you work or just hang out in the room, as well as this beautiful writing pad with some Four Seasons paper and a pin uh, for you to use as well. The dessert tray also comes to us because we are hosted, but you've also got this tiny plant. Is this a cactus? No, it's just a succulent. It's soft, like a sheep. Um, and there's also this activity guide, which I actually looked this up online to be able to make my shot list, but it has all of the information you need about the kind of things you can do during your stay at Four Seasons. Uh, they do switch this out often as they switch activities out and everything, all the information you might need is included in here. But remember, if you have any extra questions about any of these offerings, you can always just shoot a text to that number provided on your room key and they will be happy to assist you. When we were at Epcot earlier, I could not remember and didn't bring the schedule for when the shuttles came. So I just shot a text to the number and within minutes I was responded with the next two shuttle times. They did call me Mr. Stanford, but Quincy's a boy's name. So I don't blame him and I didn't correct him. Yeah. All right centerpiece of the room directly centered between the two beds which i love sometimes i stay in hotels and the tv isn't centered and i know that seems like a silly thing to bug you but it really does bug me because yeah. people don't get equal views of the tv That's important. but you do have your dresser here um which is you've got these two like little um sl like slide in drawers uh they're not drawers they're just like little shelf space and then you've got four sizable drawers so plenty of storage space here speaking of storage space there is no under bed storage space uh but there's plenty of storage space in the room we'll get to it um but there is the under bed lighting so you know the necessities are here and now we're gonna head into the hallway to head into the bathroom i can't wait to show it to you the bathroom is beautiful this is a marble bathroom it is gorgeous. Um, you've got a full glass door shower, a full tub, and a separate room with the toilet. And we'll look at everything in detail. So right when you walk in, you have this uh, huge mirror that's very nice and does have a TV in the mirror. You can literally watch TV while you're getting ready, while you're taking a bath, while you're taking a shower. You can turn on the mirror TV and watch cable. It's just on here. It's a little bit of a slow TV, 
but it's there. Now, things to look at elsewhere in the bathroom. The vanity is very large. There's plenty of space on this vanity for, I think, everyone's things. Two separate sinks, so two people can be fully getting ready at one time. Each sink comes with a cup for water in the bathroom for whatever you might need. Actually, these are cute bathroom cups, um, and those are on a little coaster. You've also got Atelier Cologne hand wash. So this is a nice uh, gel hand wash. Yes, it smells very good. It smells like flowers and fruit together at one time. You're also provided with a washcloth here as well as a shower cap. And then your remote for your mirror TV, some Kleenex slash tissue. They're probably not Kleenex. Um, they might be Kleenex. And you've got a couple of just general uh, bathroom amenities like nail polish remover pads, um, a makeup remover, Q-tips, and I think these are just cotton pads. All right, you do have a makeup mirror, which is my favorite thing ever. This one's kind of hard to, it's like a different makeup mirror than usual. Where is my face? <laughs> there is a separate light on the makeup mirror too. Then we can move on to under the sinks, hand towels on both sides of the sinks, Towels located under the sink for your use. A scale, uh, which is something I never see in hotel rooms. Very interesting. And then a hair dryer. Uh, it's a full size hair dryer and it comes with two uh, diffuser nozzles a skinnier one and a wider one. There's a trash can here by the bathtub and then this beautiful full bathtub with tons of space on the sides of it. Um, it's got like a sloping back, so it's comfortable to sit in. And you've got your regular faucet to fill it, as well as a spray nozzle that you can use too. Um, in the bath, you've got two washcloths available, this soap from Atelier Cologne, and some more towels here. And I love this tile pattern on the back. Um, as a note, the bathroom is real marble. Um, it's beautiful. It's like cracked in places because it's real marble, but it's actually actually very stunning. Also tucked between the sinks and the bathtub was this little drying rack that you can use as well. Then in the commode room, there is your ever important commode, a nice art print, and then a uh, your toilet paper. The other thing in here is a phone so that if you get a call while you are in the room or if you need to make a call, while you're doing some business, you can. Um, there's also a little um, knob on the wall for any towels. And this does have a sliding door to the commode room, but uh, it doesn't actually go all the way, at least in our room, which is fine. It's not like anyone can see anything from here. And it doesn't lock. So just something to be uh, note to note is that some people like lock, does not lock. There are two Terry bathrooms here. Um, which look very comfortable and we will definitely be taking advantage of these and let's check out that glass door shower we have towel in the shower and then on the inside is a bath mat to lay out in front of the shower and we do have beautiful marble standing shower um, high pressure customizable shower head here so you can soft normal massage types on it and then there is also another one of these detachable shower heads um, two little shelves for things as well as a nook down low. I, listen, ladies, you know we love this. I hate when showers don't have stuff like this. My shower at home does not have anywhere to put my foot. Um, also, you've got refillable soap dispensers here, all of them Atelier Cologne. There is shower gel, conditioner, and shampoo. Um, so all of that is your amenities in the shower and we can check out that shower pressure. Oh yeah, the shower pressure is very good. Um, I like desperately want to shower because it poured on us. So uh, I'll let you know how the soaps are too after that happens. All right, I kindly moved our bags out of the way so we can look at this little closet space. But uh, we've got a sizable closet space here. It is not like a closed closet. It's just part of the hallway, but it is a very nice closet. Um, there is plenty of shelving up high, plenty of hangers, and you can actually request more hangers of any kind that you need. Um, and you can do that right on the a uh, little iPad in the room and they'll bring it to you. Um, you've also got two luggage racks here, which is great, as well as this space for luggage as well. When our luggage was brought into the room, Fry's suitcase was placed here. We do have an ironing board as well as an iron and, and you've got a few accessories for your shoes as well. Down low, we have some more storage. 
Um, so there's this little tray that has, um, oh my gosh, a bag for your shoes, a bag for your laundry. Um, and that's because the Four Seasons does offer overnight shoe shining service, um, as well as laundry services. So those bags are here in this little tray. There's another little slot here where you could potentially keep some shoes. And then four of these drawers, all equally sized um, for any other items you might want to keep. Oh my gosh, in the closet area. And that is the Four Seasons room. Definitely a little fancier than we are used to on Disney property. Disney hotels are not this fancy. Even the most expensive Grand Floridian, which can cost similar amounts to this room here, um, is not nearly this fancy. It's not nearly this luxurious, which there are pros and cons to. Obviously that feels more accessible, but this is offering a lot more in terms of service, in terms of amenities, and in terms of the experience you're having. Um, if you don't want fancy, this hotel is not for you. But when it comes to being a luxury hotel, so far, so good. And we're gonna see a whole lot more tomorrow. This hotel has some insane amenities and there are some insane things included in your room rate that you do not have to pay for. We will be taking a look at that stuff tomorrow and I think you're gonna be pretty shocked. But we've got more fun to have tonight too. But before we get too far into some of the fun, let's talk about the not so fun part, which is paying for a room like this, paying for an experience like this. Uh, we are in a regular Four Seasons room, but this hotel also offers suites and deluxe suites, as well as larger suites such as the Grand Presidential and Royal Suites. And you can also get accessible rooms here as well. Uh, the regular Four Seasons room sleep three adults or two adults and two children. I just looked at my notes and I do need to bring up that the overnight shoe shining is complimentary with your stay. So if you want your shoes shined, you can do that. I don't think we brought any shoes worth shining. Pricing wise, standard rooms average price per night in July is around $1,100 to $2,000 per night, depending on the view. More expensive dates like New Year's Eve this year show an average price per night of around $2,000 to around $2,650 for the standard rooms. Suites are going to be typically several thousand dollars more expensive per night, but that depends on the suite and the date. They also offer a bed and breakfast rate for any of their rooms, which includes breakfast at any of the resort's restaurants that offer breakfast or with in-room dining. And that's usually around $65 more on the rate per night. Also, something I remind you a lot with Disney hotels is to check for special offers. That stands on the Four Seasons site as well. Make sure to see that there's not a special offer going on before you book or check your dates and see if there's a special offer. You might be able to get a discount on rooms. Right now, as I'm filming this, they're running a deal where you get, uh, if you pay for a certain number of nights, you get an extra night free. So make sure to check for special offers because that can obviously save you a lot of money. Now, I do keep comparing the Four Seasons to Grand Floridian. I'm going to continue doing that during our stay because that is the best um, actual Disney owned hotel reference to something like this. Um, for reference, a Grand Floridian standard room uh, typically runs from around $760 to around $1,560. And club level, which is gonna have a little bit more of those amenities, get a little closer to this experience, is going to run around $920 to around $2,070 per night. So the club level rooms at Grand Floridian are similar in price to the rooms here. We did use the in-room iPad to make some requests. These are complimentary if you like them. Uh, both of the girls got body pillows. I got a shave set because I forgot my razor. Um, and we got an extra bathrobe and an extra pair of slippers because there were only two in the room. All of this complimentary. They literally just brought it to the room. I had to press a couple buttons on the iPad and there's a ton of stuff that you can request. But yeah, amenities at Grand Floridian in club level are going to be less than something like this, but a little more approachable. And also you're gonna get more Disney perks staying at Grand Floridian. The Four Seasons gets you early theme park entry, but it does not get you, get you extended evening hours, for instance. It's also a haul to the parks. Our shuttle took us 30 minutes today. So if you're looking for those Disney perks, Four Seasons is going to have some, but not deliver like a Disney hotel. However, if you are looking for true luxury for a fancy experience, Four Seasons is going to offer that where Disney hotels cannot. It's a little late. We, we spent a lot of the day at Epcot today. It's about 9.04. And you know what happens at uh, 9.20? Happily ever after happens at Magic Kingdom. And we can see it from our room. So that's what we'll be doing in just a few minutes. All right, when one fireworks show ends, another one begins. And this one, I'm so excited. Just watched um, Happily Ever After. 
from awesome our balcony. <laughs> wow, good job, you guys. Thank um, you. It was a really great view. You can't really see the castle, especially once the fireworks start because it gets really smoky. So the main thing, you obviously aren't seeing projections and you obviously aren't seeing like Tinkerbell fly, but we did see all of the fireworks from a really great angle. We're kind of just off of center. Um, we're coming in from like a Tomorrowland angle and they're far away, but they look amazing. And they're huge. Mm -hmm. They're huge. So uh, definitely awesome to be able to watch that from our room, from our balcony um, with room service. Like that's a moment. Um, but we are going to probably get a little less gross and then go down for a late dinner at the lobby bar. For dinner, we have come to the lobby bar. Uh, this is what it sounds like. It's the bar right off the lobby. Uh, they do have kind of like dinner hour sort of situation. You can come and get drinks to go. You can you can see Emma. Not always. But one time she's been here. Yeah, right now. Yeah. Um, on the menu, a bunch of craft cocktails they have. Uh, zero proof cocktails are available. And then they've also got beer and wine by the glass, as well as food, chips, dips, and spread, a bunch of like smaller plates, uh, some greens and some soups, and then even some full entree portions. So full dinner menu here. And uh, I think we're gonna grab dinner, but not dessert, because we've got other plans for dessert. I went with the Let There Be Fig, which is Suntory Toki Whiskey, Drambuie, Lemon, Fig, Apple Spice, and Orange. And it looks delicious, and I'm excited to try it. And for my drink, I got the Spoonful of Pineapple, which has two different kinds of rum in it, Amaretto, Pineapple, Orange, Lime, and Cinnamon Syrup. For my drink, I got the Stuck On You. It's Tequila, Combier, Lime, Mango, Jalapeno, Shrub. And for my dinner, I went with the Spicy Tuna Roll. You can get a Spicy Tuna Roll or a California Roll. I decided for Spicy Tuna, and it does come with a little, oops, a little bit of soy sauce on the side. So I'm in the mood for sushi. All right, for my meal, I am still chilly after being caught in the rain all afternoon. So I went with just a classic chicken noodle soup. That's literally all it says on the menu. We're going with something simple. All right, so for my entree, I went with a superfood salad. This is baby spinach, baby kale, broccoli, blueberries, puffed quinoa, pepitas, butternut squash, avocado lime dressing, and pomegranate seeds. It's a beautiful salad. It looks like a very large salad. You can get it with protein, but I went without just because we did snack around the world at Epcot today, and I'm still kind of full. <laughs> and to talk money, uh, our cocktails were $16, $18, and $20. $21 for fries, sushi, uh, $10 for Emma's soup, and $19 for my salad. Okay, I'm trying mine. This is really tasty. Um, Suntory is a Japanese whiskey that I actually have at home a lot and I really like the flavor of. It's a lighter, less aggressive whiskey, um, but it still has a lot of great like caramel flavors, vanilla notes, and I actually think those come through in this. The main flavor I'm getting is that of citrus from the orange and a little bit of that like apple spice. It's honestly kind of a fall drink, but not, it's like perfect for the season. It's like kind of fall, kind of summer, and it's August when I'm drinking this. So it's awesome for the season. I'm getting the nice flavor of fig. I definitely think it's heavy on the liquor taste, um, but a very well balanced cocktail, very sippable, um, and still feels strong and like, you know, worth the, worth the money. Cheers. This is really, really nice. All of those flavors blend together very, very well. I can really taste the cinnamon and the pineapple, of course. It's called a spoonful of pineapple. This is like an elevated fruity drink because it still is really sweet, really fruity, but it takes it up a notch with that cinnamon, which I really, really enjoy. All right, time to try mine. I'm actually very excited about it just for the cup alone has a really nice jalapeno flavor. Uh, I think that the mango balances out and adds just a slight bit of sweetness, but really that main flavor is the jalapeno. Um, there's no heat though, it's really just the flavor in it. I can taste the tequila slightly, but it's a nice taste, it's not overwhelming, but this is definitely not like juice like some of the other drinks I prefer. Okay, I'm trying out my salad. Can I get a bite with a little bit of everything? This tastes like it's made of all superfoods. I find that I mean. It's like missing something exciting. There's not quite enough dressing on here. And so <clears throat> the main flavors are really the flavors of the raw ingredients. Mostly what I'm tasting is the spinach and the pepitas, which are adding a really nice smoky, like pumpkin-y flavor to it. I also love the pomegranate seeds for like a burst in the mouth. 
Um, and the blueberries are awesome too. It's a very fresh, light salad. It's perfect for me after a, like a couple of days of eating theme park food when you just need a vegetable. But it's definitely not gonna be like the most, this isn't the best salad I've ever had because there's not quite enough dressing. Though the flavors do mesh well, it's just, you're really just eating raw ingredients. And that can be good and it is what I appreciate in this moment, but it's not always what I would appreciate. All right, here we go. All right, this is a really good spicy tuna roll. Now, normally when I've had spicy tuna rolls other places, there's been like the sauce on top that is not here. It's inside the sushi roll, but it's very good. Pretty spicy, um, nothing that I can't handle. But again, just be aware, but it is called a spicy tuna roll for a reason. All right, here we go, chicken noodle soup. So this is actually just very simple. It's plain, it's exactly what I wanted. It's warm and there's quite a bit of chicken in here. It reminds me of like a mix I've made before with like a chicken broth. So you know, like you elevated a little bit at home. So it's not really fancy, nothing to like rant and rave about, but it's exactly what I wanted. So no complaints from me. Proper bed signs, clean, deserving bed signs. Mm -hmm. Triple luxury bed signs. Ready ladies? One, two, three. <laughs> oh man, wow. I have to say I jumped and it felt like landing on a cloud. Yeah. I can't wait to go to sleep. <laughs> it's like, it's firm enough to support you, but plush enough that you sink in just a little bit. I, I can tell the sheets are high quality and then the pillows. Mm -hmm. Give me a pillow. Quincy already likes the pillows. I yeah. love the pillows. Oh, they're so heavy. They are and they're so big and they're so they're also the perfect mix of like supportive and soft um very very comfy bed feels like a high quality bed what i would expect from a luxury hotel like this all right bed signs was interrupted because our room service arrived we didn't get dessert at dinner specifically because there is 24 hour in room dining here at four seasons and we were able to order this beautiful piece of chocolate cake um, that came to the room on a very heavy tray and we're gonna eat that as our final snack of the night. Also, Emma had to help me with an espresso, but we've got our chocolate cake. It's beautiful. It's got raspberries and a nice raspberry sauce and some of those crunchy gold pearly things and it looks pretty tasty. I don't know how I got so lucky, but they are giving me the privilege of the first bite. Cheers. Oh my gosh. This is the richest I've ever felt. Oh really? Yeah, because it's so rich. Mm. It's really, honestly, it's almost like f uh, borderline fudgy, but it's it's really it's incredibly heavy. It's very much dark chocolate with um, what I think is like a milk chocolate, not ganache, but um, filling throughout the layers. Really nice. I think it pairs very well with the raspberry. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily the best cake I've ever had, but it's towards the top. Good morning. Um, okay, it's super, super early. It's not even 6 a.m. yet. No, it's 6 a.m. What time is it? Not even 7 yet. But we are, uh, we've got character breakfast this morning. Um, yes, there is character breakfast here at the Four Seasons at one of the restaurants, Ravello. Um, we'll talk a lot about it because we are going to go down and hang out with Goofy and pals. So, um, yeah, we're going to get ready first. But then we're going to go have character breakfast and then have an exciting resort day. And Fry and Emma are staying and hanging out with me, which wasn't the original plan. And I'm very excited. Fry is still in bed. You have like 15 minutes to get ready. It's gonna take me two minutes to put on my makeup. I'm gonna throw my hair in a ponytail and I'm gonna put on a t-shirt. That sounds really uh, ambitious. All right, this morning we have made it to Ravello. On select mornings, Ravello offers good morning breakfast with Goofy and his pals. And that's what we'll be doing this morning. So yes, Four Seasons has its very own character meal. Um, and I'm so, so excited. Because obviously, we've done like all the character meals in Disney World. But we haven't, because we haven't done this one. So good morning breakfast with Goofy and his pals is a buffet with a dedicated photographer that will come around to your table. It's available Thursdays, Saturdays, and select Tuesdays as of the time of filming, but make sure to check when you're booking uh, to see when it's available during your stay. Ravello has a decadent breakfast with a fresh juice bar, and they do serve dinner as well. We'll talk a little bit more about dinner when we come back here for the resort tour, but breakfast is this massive buffet 
with tons of different options to choose from. We are here very, very early. It just opened, so no one is in here. And this restaurant is Michelin recommended. The way the character breakfast works is that the buffet is just all you care to enjoy. You can come up here and get as much stuff as you want. There's a fruit section, a yogurt and parfait section, bread, toast, bagels, plenty of toppings, some pastries, cereal, um, smoked salmon, and other things for like your bagels. There's a whole section of charcuterie, uh, a whole section of veggies and things like that for a salad. And then there's a whole hot bar, egg bar, um, waffles, pancakes, pretty much anything when you think breakfast is here. Now, regular drinks are included, but they do have some specialty beverages as well, both alcoholic and non-alcoholic. Fresh juice bar, not included. Specialty coffee is not included. Um, but lots of options. It's pretty cool. All right, Goofy did come around. There's literally two families in the restaurant, so I have a feeling we're gonna get a lot of time with Goofy. We'll also be seeing Mickey and Minnie this morning. It is a character breakfast hosted by Goofy, um, so it's Goofy and his pals, but we do have Mickey and Minnie today. Um, Goofy and both the mice are dressed in like cute vacation fun wear, and so uh, we're gonna get to see them and hang out with them a bit. Uh, the really cool thing is that they do give you a photo pass card. There is a photo pass photographer who comes and takes pictures of you interacting with the characters while you do it so that you don't have to like worry about getting the pictures yourself which is really cool and it's something you typically do not see at character dining. If you have Memory Maker or Disney Photo Pass then you have these photos in your My Disney Experience app when you link this card or you can purchase them. Goopy, can I have some friends who aren't here but I think would love to see you? Can you kind of give them a little hello? <laughs> Aww. Well thank you Goopy. <laughs> Hi guys, Minnie you look amazing. I'm so ready for vacation fun. <laughs> Hi, Minnie. How are you? Um, Life's and friends, and they are at the buffet, and I've just been hanging out with Goofy, but they'll come back, and then they can come see you. <laughs> so excited for breakfast. Yeah, I haven't eaten anything yet. I'm, I've got to get up to the buffet. This character breakfast is wild. <laughs> We've already done a full set of stretches with Mickey Mouse, and we just had like a three-minute dance party with Goofy alone. No one else is in here. We're alone. No, granted, we did get a very early reservation. Ravello character breakfast starts at 7 a.m., and we came in at the earliest time you can. Uh, reservations are highly recommended for Ravello. Um, and the early one, I will tell you, you get so much time with the characters. We haven't even gotten any food yet. Something else to know is that Ravello does have bottomless mimosas and bottomless Bloody Marys. Um, it's really, really hard to find a bottomless drink in Disney World. I've been drinking their regular coffee. It's very good. It's like a mid to dark roast. Um, and it's like the perfect wake me up coffee. So I've been very pro that. I also got this, which is one of their juices from their specialty juice bar. Now these are not included with the buffet. Uh, this one in particular is called Delicious Greens. A 10 ounce is $10 and a 14 ounce is $14. It's made with spinach, lemon, ginger, orange, and green apple. So, juice cheers. I feel passionate about this juice. So now you're awake. This juice is so good. It has like all of the qualities of like a like citrusy fruity juice but there's like the nice mellowing green note from the greens but I don't think besides the fact that it's obviously got greens in it you would know it has greens just based on the taste. My favorite part is the aftertaste which kind of has like a really nice like gingery bite to it and then it finishes with the tartness of green apple. You're gonna wake up. A play. Okay. <laughs> I am trying my cold brew. Uh, it literally is just a cold brew, not Joffrey's or anything, and then I it's added caramel as well. It's fine. It's a normal cold brew. Uh, it's not the best I've ever had. It's not like a fancy one that you can get around Disney World, but it's going to do the job, and that's really what I care about. Wouldn't like overly recommend it for the taste, but if you just want a cold coffee, it's pretty decent cold coffee. All right, to continue on our cold press juice journey, we are doing the wake up flight, which comes with three different little detox shots. Um, but it's $12. Okay, Fry had one sip of one of them. It's the immunity. Okay, we've not even gotten there. So this one here on the far left is the immunity. It has ginger, lemon, turmeric, and local honey. This one in the middle is the wake up with pineapple, ginger, and lime. And then over here is the detox with honeydew, celery, and agave. Okay, I'm gonna start. You're starting with the immunity? I'm starting. Okay, I was gonna start with the immunity. Do it, do it, do it, do it. Okay, cheers. I've not had the wake up, so I can't make total judgment calls, but I'm surprised this one is not called the wake up. The spice of the ginger is out in full 
force. That, I mean, there is turmeric in it. The local honey cuts the ginger just a little bit, but it's really, truly that spice, and it sits right in the back of my it's mouth. Like burning, it's like burning as it goes down, and I say this way. in a very pleasant um, way because, I mean, it's waking me up. I feel like I have full immunity now. So I'm not upset with that at all. Let's try the wake up though and see if they should switch names. The wake up is a much more subtle version, I feel like, of what I just had. There is ginger in the wake up, but it's very, very light. It's nothing compared to the immunity. Uh, but the pineapple juice is really light and refreshing, and it does kind of make me feel like I need to brighten my eyes a little bit, if that makes sense. And then the last one is the honeydew, celery, and agave. This is the detox. Looks like maybe I should stir it. Ooh, this one's easily my favorite. That's so nice and savory. The honeydew is very sweet, but with the celery, it's almost a little bit salty. I like the combo of it. I think it's very refreshing. If you need something to kind of jar your system, though, and wake you up out of a trance you apparently have been in your whole life, maybe check out the immunity. All right, for my morning drink, I did get a cappuccino. Um, normally, on a regular day, I just drink regular black coffee, but we're here, we're having a nice breakfast, so I got a fancy drink. Let's try a cappuccino. I also got it with um, caramel. Yeah, that's true. You could, oh yeah. You want to try my green? This is really good. You can tell it's really made well. Um, the espresso itself has nice rich flavor, but then the milk helps to sweeten it a little bit, balance it out, plus that added um, flavor shot of caramel. This is wonderful. I might have to get another one. We're gonna share all our thoughts at the end. Uh, but the uh, one thing I wanted to know is that the price here for the Ravello character breakfast is $52 for adults, $32 for kids. Um, for reference, breakfast at uh, Topolino's Terrace, Breakfast a la Art, which is probably the most comparable character breakfast to this one in Disney World, is going to be uh, $45 for adults for the entree um, and about $29 for kids. So this is about, it's just a touch more expensive than Topolino's Terrace, about $7 for adults. Uh, the big comparison to Breakfast a la Art is that there is one fewer character here. Here it's Goofy, Mickey, and Minnie. And at Tablinos Terrace, you get uh, Mickey, Minnie, Donald, and Daisy. Uh, they're in specialty outfits at both locations. Here at Ravello, you are getting an all-you-can-eat buffet, um, as well as options from a press juice bar and specialty coffee options and bottomless mimosas and bottomless Bloody Marys. Obviously, that stuff costs extra, but it is an option. And alcoholic drinks cost extra at Tablinos Terrace. And I can tell you one thing, they're not bottomless. The environments, I would say, are relatively comparable. The, I think Topolino's is a little nicer because it's rooftop, and Ravello is located off the pool deck here at Four Seasons. I think quality is fairly close. The only thing that like you can't get here is like a really nice steak and eggs meal. You know, their specialty waffles over there are a little bit more elevated, but there's a lot more abundance here. The best thing about this is that it is not super crowded. Obviously, we came super early, but even now that we're getting into, uh, it's almost 9 a.m., there's not a ton of people here. And we have spent so much time with the characters, amazing interactions with the characters. And you do not have to be staying at Four Seasons to come to Ravello. In fact, that's a great way to see the Four Seasons if, it is, if staying here is something that's out of your budget. You could book this character breakfast and come on over to Four Seasons. Just You show them at the gate at the entrance to Golden Oak. You show them your dining reservation and then you'll get admitted into the hotel, valet park your car, come on in for an amazing character meal. You can do that without staying here and you're paying about the same amount as a character meal in Disney World. We also just looked it up, uh, Crystal Palace, which is an all-you-can-eat buffet with far inferior food to this, um, with the 100 Acre Woods characters, is the same price. Now that one is in Magic Kingdom, so there's other special experiences, obviously the Winnie the Pooh characters, but the food is nowhere near this good. And it's the same price as Topolino, so only $7 cheaper. All right, so we finished Ravello. Yes. Um, it was delightful. Yeah, it was, it was amazing. so much fun. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think it's an excellent option for a character meal. All character meals are gonna be around $50. This one's a little more expensive, but it is all you can eat. And with Mickey and 
goofy and mini, and you get to come out to the Four Seasons mm -hmm. um, and come into the Golden Oak neighborhood. I just think I really enjoyed it mm -hmm. for $7 more than a typical character meal. I think it's definitely a contender when you're trying to decide. Mm -hmm. um, food wise, I delicious. think it's probably the highest quality buffet I've had in a long time. Everything had extra layers of flavor. It had all been prepared very well, despite being prepared in bulk. Mm -hmm. um, I could have eaten that. There was like a chorizo casserole yeah. that oh had soft, gosh. runny eggs on it. I could have eaten probably the entire serving dish it was that incredible. they were serving to people. Amazing pastries. I loved the juice. Mm -hmm. I absolutely yes. would up char like pay more for the pressed juice because yeah. it was so good. I didn't expect it all. Mm -hmm. that I think justifies the price as well. Yeah, and they had pork sausage and chicken sausage. They mm -hmm. like had like a salad an section, bar. an omelet bar. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. it was just a really like stellar buffet. Really amazing quality food. Amazing interactions with the characters. Mm -hmm. We were there for a long time. It takes us a long time to do coverage, and we were there for a long time. But I would say in the normal amount of time you might spend for breakfast, an hour, an hour and a half, you would see them at least three times. There are two desks in here. There's reception and there's the concierge, which you have access to both of them 24 hours a day as you might need them. And then across the room, there's actually a Disney vacation planning center. So if you are looking into getting any tickets for Disney, um, even if you have anything like a VIP tour or anything that you're interested in doing, you can handle that with the Disney cast members located right here at the Disney Vacation Planning Center. Also, as characteristic of many Disney hotels, there is a little kiddo section in the lobby. There's also a couple of ottomans um, that you can hang out on while checking in, and this TV that has the map of the Four Seasons along with local time and local weather. Let's take a look at this map. So the Four Seasons property is not too large, but it is fairly large. You've got your hotel here, that's the main tower, and then this is sort of the lobby entrance space, and here is the ball room and business centers. There are some sport courts and things, and if you cross this bridge, you end up in golf course land across. Um, and then back over here, we've got fun resort activities like the pool, family pool, lazy river, um, private Four Seasons residences, and the adults only pool is right here center. We're going to kind of get a full tour of all of this, so don't worry, we'll check it all out. I know it's a little confusing to look at on a map. My favorite part of the lobby is that just off the lobby, there is a beautiful outdoor seating area. The store is locked or I just can't pull it hard enough, but a beautiful seating area. Um, we were out there a second ago and it's a lot of nice seating out in the pleasant, hot summer weather. Our first stop off the lobby though is going to be Lickety Split. Uh, Lickety Split is kind of your grab and go sort of spot. It's characterized by house-made gelato and pastries, and those things are developed by a James Beard nominated executive pastry chef here. They also have Cafe Umbria coffee or handcrafted milkshakes, as well as breakfast pastries, salads, and sandwiches. Of course, Fry, Emma, and I are all here, which means there is no way we are not getting coffee right now, um, especially because we gotta try it out. We gotta see if the coffee's good. They have acai bowls. All right. We got our coffees. We are outside on the patio at Lickety Split. There's a beautiful outdoor patio. Oh, a wonderful table and seating next directly to the outdoor seating for the lobby bar, which we'll talk a little bit more about. Obviously, we saw that pretty in detail last night for dinner, um, but we got to try our coffee. Mm. Mm. This is so good. This is very good. This is the coffee I wanted from breakfast. There's this cool print on the wall, and it says, what does your coffee say about you? And then I got lattes. So we're classic, easygoing, and comforting. You also got a latte. I also got a latte. But, but this morning you got a cappuccino. Confident, tough, yet lighthearted. One thing that I really love about the Four Seasons is there's really beautiful art. I find this a compelling art piece. Yeah, it's like very dark ocean at night. The brush strokes are so pretty. There's also these water bottle refill stations around, which look very fancy and would be really nice if I hadn't lost my water bottle at Epcot yesterday. It's at the lobby bar mostly last night, but the lobby bar is right here. Um, drinks, casual fare, dinner, uh, and there's a live guitarist some nights. There wasn't last night, but there is some nights. This art collection is very cool. We've seen this walking by the, uh, by here. There's actually an Instagram story filter that goes with this art. So you can scan the QR code with the art and then the art will come to life. Should we do it? All right, look, look, it comes to life. The art like fully comes to life in the like augmented reality filter. The Mickey one is so cute. Look at the look sunflowers. At those are so cool. I love those. So these are by artist uh, Dom Corona and that's really cool that he included 
augmented reality aspects. Right. There are two merchandising uh, locations here off of the lobby. One is Wardrobe, which is a lifestyle boutique with designer options. Um, one thing to note is that the Four Seasons does offer style chats where stylists will select an outfit based on your preferences. And it kind of works where if you decide to buy, uh, there is no fee. If you don't decide to buy, there's a $20 styling fee. But um, there's definitely a lot fancier clothes in here than I have seen in hotel gift shops typically. So this is a crazy skirt. Wardrobe is definitely going to be more designer options with the higher price tag, but I see some really cute stuff in there and there is a sale rack. So um, definitely worth looking around for sure. The other merchandise location here at Four Seasons is Fable. Now Fable closes a little earlier than Wardrobe, so just keep that in mind if you want to swing by here. But there's actually some pretty fun stuff in here. You'll find some Disney merchandise in here like toys and plushes, even some accessories. <gasps> they have Bubble Bar! I love Bubble definitely going to be limited when it comes to Disney merchandise so you're going to want to snag souvenirs in the park if you're staying at Four Seasons just to make sure you get the most options but there's some super fun stuff in here a lot of fun stuff for kids like sketchbooks coloring books and pencils and things like that there's stationery um different like essentials very ever important essentials wall and if you need an essential once the uh once Fable is closed, you can just speak to the front desk and they can get any sort of medicine or anything for you. They'll make sure that they can get what you need. One of the super special things about Fable though is they do offer these beautiful princess dresses for kiddos. I've seen a couple little girls wearing these and they look very, very happy. And also there are, Fable offers the option for personalized in-room play tents that you can have set up, purchase and have set up in your room, which is very, very cool. Very fun for kiddos if you wanna make something extra special. Look at the Mickey was your shoes. All right, so we are down on the first floor now, which is back by Ravello, which you'll remember from breakfast this morning. Now we got to talk a little bit about Ravello during the rest of the day. Of course, there is the character breakfast that we saw all about, but excluding character breakfast, kids actually dine free if they are five and younger with a paying adult which is awesome. Uh, this is a Michelin recommended modern Italian restaurant with an outdoor terrace. And menu wise, their specialties are pasta, pizza, limoncello, and Italian gelato. Here's that outdoor terrace from Ravello. You would have seen that this morning when uh, everybody who's cool took Emma and Fry out here. But uh, one specialty on the menu at Ravello is their veal ravioli. So that's kind of a, one of the signature dishes of this restaurant here at the Four Seasons. So definitely something to consider ordering if you're there for dinner. And of course, character breakfast was chef's kiss. There is also an arrival departure lounge. So if you are arriving before your room is ready or departing after your room is gone, you have access to the lounge. Now they do typically have some amenities like changing space but right now those are unavailable but you can use the fitness lockers if you need something like that so you can head into the fitness locker rooms which i won't show on camera but if you're using the pool and you need to get changed and you don't have access to your room anymore there's plenty of space for you to do so um, and you do have access to that for the duration of your departure date or arrival date so one thing that's very unique about the spa here at uh, Four Seasons is that the relaxation areas are complimentary and those include an indoor outdoor tranquility lounge, post treatment solarium lounge with zero gravity loungers, locker rooms, a whirlpool terrace, and a custom experience shower. All complimentary with your stay. You do not have to book a treatment to get access to those, which is very different from the usual spa experience. I know, don't worry, we'll go. We're going to finish our tour of the hotel first, I think, but I think we might end our stay with a little TLC. They, of course, do have spot treatments as well, including massages and skincare treatments. And the salon offers magical moments makeovers for little knights and princesses as well, which is very cute. It's like the Bibbidi Bobbidi boutique of the hotel. All right, and we have made it to, frankly, the massive fitness center. Um, so on this side, there's an aerobic studio here which has a lot of aerobic equipment like uh, yoga balls and cardio and things like that, as well as free weights. And there's no one in here. There's even a bar. You can do bar in here. They've got fitness on demand for work. They literally have, um, they got the rope. <laughs> um, they've got a tire. I don't know what that is in the corner. Just a very state of the art aerobic studio. Um, there is an exterior lawn that you can use for fitness if you'd like, but it's a million degrees in Orlando. They also have spring water and towels out for your use as well. The fitness center also offers complimentary fitness classes with your stay. So you can take a look at what classes will be offered during your stay in that recreation guide that you can find online or in your room um, where you can literally take free fitness classes. 
there are some folks working out in the remainder of the fitness center, so I'm not going to film in there so I don't bother them, but full uh, weight machines as well as cardio equipment like ellipticals, treadmills, and everything like that. And the fitness center is 24 hours, so you get access to use it no matter what time of day you want to work out. Now, our tour takes us up to the very, very top floor of the tower. It is a 17 floor tower, one of the tallest buildings in Disney World. Seen from miles around, I can see it from my neighborhood. All right, so it is currently closed, but this is Kappa Restaurant and Bar, a Michelin starred steakhouse on the rooftop of the hotel. There are very stunning views that we'll look at in just a second. But this restaurant is characterized by a menu of wood grilled meats, uh, seafood, and Spanish influenced tapas with wine and a cocktail program. There are two different outdoor terraces that have panoramic views of Walt Disney World fireworks. There's also an open kitchen and this view is even more stunning than the one from our room. You can see miles and miles and miles and miles and miles and miles. Reservations are highly recommended for Kappa. Um, I checked today to see how far out they are and they were about a week out. So probably just to be on the safe side, book this as soon as you know you want to come. Um, Kappa is obviously going to be a little bit more on the expensive side. It is Michelin star. It is a fancier experience. As you can see, the interior of the restaurant is beautiful. Um, so definitely, definitely reservations recommended. And we are up high enough actually on this floor that you can see straight over to Magic Kingdom. You can see the castle, you can see contemporary um, perfectly clearly from here. I can even see Big Thunder Mountain. So uh, it's a stunning view. I think this might be the best view in Disney World. Is that the whole Skyliner? Kappa's atmosphere is very dark and fine looking. Um, there is a bar side and then there is a full table service side complete with an open kitchen. Quite beautiful restaurant. Uh, I wish we could dine here um, this trip. It was not on the cards for us. We had too much to see otherwise, but uh, absolutely gorgeous space. When you are making reservations for Kappa, um, you can reserve in the lounge or the uh, restaurant. They both require reservations and you can request your preference if you have one. Um, the bar itself is first come first serve. <music> So on this side of the hotel, if you go left in the lobby, you're going to find the shorter side of the hotel. This is not like the main tower. This is where you're going to find any ballroom, event, meeting spaces, all going to be over here. So actually connected to the building is the grand ballroom, which is where they host meetings and events and weddings. It's gorgeous right now. And this is the atrium of the ballroom. This isn't even the whole thing, um, but it's just a beautiful like very well designed space with a skylight and this is literally just the entryway the ballroom is through those doors this side of the building has access to a lot of those private meeting spaces and meeting spaces um, this is sort of the terrace on the outside of the ballroom which is beautiful they've got curtains drawn um, for whatever they're setting up but huge outdoor terrace connected to the ballroom that looks out over the wonderful grounds and the lake and the grand ballroom isn't the only ballroom there are plenty of other spaces ballrooms meeting rooms whatever um, to fit the needs of whatever groups might be coming here. So for Seasons, of course, does host larger groups. However, there was a large group doing like a lot of movement on the grounds yesterday. And the only thing that in it interrupted was, I think I saw slightly more people in the lobby area and the shuttle was picking up from a different space. So it was, I wouldn't call it a disruption at all to our experience what? when there was a really large group here yesterday. Oh, like, you could only tell in the lobby. Yeah, you, and even then it wasn't even, we were never waiting for any service or anything like that. So um, I think they've got large group handling under control pretty well here, yes. um, but always something to be, you know, no cognizant. Also, all guests have access to a business center. So if you have any business needs, um, computers and things like that, printers, fully outfitted for anything you might need to work on while you're here. Also our meeting space down here. And that's sort of the general vibe of the event and meetings rooms. All right, so I keep walking past this fountain and I think it's really cool. And it's not anything exciting, but it's just a cool fountain. <laughs> Outside of the event space, there's a fire pit that I'm walking past now. We're actually heading over to some of the outdoor event space called the King Meadow. There are a couple of these outdoor lawn spaces just usable for events, weddings, or whatever you might need. There are also these little buildings, which are lakeside meeting rooms. And I know that we're not doing a meeting or anything, but this is actually a really pleasant walk to have all these little pathways to be able to go around. Out along the very edge of the property, there are tennis courts. No one's out here on them right now. It is pretty blazing hot. Um, but you can uh, make your reservations through the spa to uh, play on the tennis courts. And they are very nice courts. I don't know a lot about tennis, but they look regulation size. At the tennis courts, 
which are three hard true courts. You can also get lessons from an on-site tennis pro and instructional clinics. Right, we are now on a walking path to go around to the golf side of the resort. Now we have made it around the lake to Plancha. This is a restaurant, it's the golf club restaurant serving Latin American flavors and classic clubhouse favorites. And they do offer a Sunday brunch here as well. Probably Plancha. Probably Plancha. My bucket is here for Spanish translations. Another beautiful restaurant with an outdoor patio and nice indoor spaces as well. So if you're having a day of golf or if you just want to check out one of the lunch spots, Plancha is here to offer that nice dining for a good lunch. This is also the clubhouse with, you know, bathrooms and the golf shop. Also, we walked out here, but you do not have to. There is this like large mega golf court that can take you to and from the clubhouse out here, uh, whether you're golfing or just want to grab lunch at Plancha. And of course, we have to talk about that Four Seasons golf course. This is the Tranquilo Golf Course. It is uh, located right next to the Four Seasons Golf and Sports Club, and it is actually a certified Audubon Sanctuary. This is an 18-hole Tom Fazio signature golf course. It is beautifully maintained, and I don't play golf, but I do watch golf. So I think this would make for a pretty fun afternoon. And of course, they've got cart rentals and anything you might need for your golf day. <music> We've made it to the pool portion of our show. So this is PB&G, which is a very exciting way of naming a pool bar and grill. Yeah, and it is genius. Although it does make me think of PB&Js. All right, so PB&G uh, serves American fair salads and seafood. It's kind of your pool lunch stop located between the two pools here at Four Seasons. I keep wanting to call it Four Wilderness. Four Wilderness. Yeah. Um, so right over here is the Oasis pool, which is the adults only pool. Um, it has cabana rentals that include welcome beverages, an appetizer, and a welcome gift if you're interested in that. And it does have an infinity edge, underwater music, and a whirlpool. The other pool is the yeah, family pool, really which we'll talk a little bit more once we get over there. But for now, let's head into PB&G. So I got the A Mule in Moscow, which is a $17 cocktail made with hangar one, citron, ginger, and berries. And it looks really tasty. I'm excited about it. And it's a frozen mule, which sounds like refreshing perfection. Sounds Cheers to Four Seasons Resort Day. Mmm, this is delicious. I like can't taste any alcohol, so it's definitely on the like really refreshing side. Uh, it's got a little bit of a raspberry flavor, but a real raspberry flavor, not like a raspberry syrup, which I appreciate because I actually don't like raspberry syrup, but I like real raspberries. Main flavor is going to be ginger. This is just the day of ginger after that immunity shot. Really light beverage with a nice berry flavor. Um, the ice is super fine, so it's like a perfect frozen drink texture. And it comes in a Moscow meal glass, which is great too. All right, for my drink, I got the Skinny Dip. It was $15. It had a choice of vodka or gin. I went with vodka, and then it had cucumber, rosemary, lemonade, and St. Germain in it. Now, I technically have already tried mine, but I just want an excuse to try it again. This, frankly, when I was talking to the waiter, I just wanted something nice and light and refreshing. That is exactly what this is. There's a sprig of rosemary in it, which just adds a really nice kind of herbiness, very light, bright, and just tasty. The heaviest flavor uh, after the rosemary, in my opinion, is actually the agave syrup in it. Uh, it's just nice and light and sweet. It's a lot more sweet than I thought it would be. I'm not upset about it, um, but definitely not as just necessarily refreshing as I thought it would be and definitely on the sweeter side. And for my drink, I actually asked our waiter what his favorite was presentation wise or if any of them were super pretty and he recommended the Pretty in Pink, which is gin, rose water, raspberry, lychee, and lemon. This is very, very nice. The lychee is the leading um, flavor here forward. Very berry, very sugary. Very pretty and pink, obviously. It's a fun um, by the pool beverage. It comes in like a little tiki glass, which I think is super fun, plus the flower on top. So I'm very glad he recommended this to me. Okay, food has arrived. I am absolutely thrilled to be here. I got the tuna poke. It has sesame soy poke sauce, scallions, oh, avocados, spicy aioli, and prawn crackers. Yeah, we did all get fish, not on purpose. For my little lunch today, I did get the popcorn shrimp, which is buttermilk marinated rock shrimp, PB&G cocktail sauce, boom boom sauce with lemon. First, I'll try some without the sauce. Okay, this is probably the best dish of any kind of popcorn shrimp that I've ever had. This is even way better than the firecracker shrimp over at the Boathouse in Disney Springs. 
It's just so incredibly well seasoned. The breading on the outside, the sauce. I think I need three more orders of this. All right, here's my first official tasting bite. This is absolutely incredible. The prawn crackers are so salty and savory, but light and airy, almost like bubbly, I think is a good word to describe them. Put that with the soft tuna and the avocado, which is really creamy. It's just a great textural combination. So delicious. All right, I have the mussels. I don't know why I'm showing you them. Mussels look gross. Not the best muscle, mussels I've ever had, but they're in its league which I don't say a lot. I get mussels a lot of places. I love mussels in a white wine garlic sauce. And these are delicious. Super garlicky with just whispers of that white wine flavor, which is nice because sometimes white wine garlic sauce can taste like straight white wine. Super buttery. Um, I'm very, very happy with this. And don't worry, I also got french fries so that I have a little more sustenance than just a whole plate of mussels. Well, we were gonna do pool. No pool. Fry okay. buckets asleep. Um, we still have more outside stuff to see, which is a big bummer because it looks like this. So once we uh, wrap up lunch, we might head and try to wait out the rain in the sp in the. I mean, just try to wait out the rain in the spa. I think our only option is to try to wait out the rain in the spa for sure. So we might do that, and then hopefully be able to get some sunny shots of the family pool and the lazy river and such, but uh, we'll see. We just did, uh, so included, the outdoor pool was closed because of the rain, but uh, there are a few loungers that weren't any available. So we did sauna and showers, and then just got back ready in their little getting ready room. And it was very nice. It's definitely a smaller spa, so if you have your heart set on like something, I would maybe go early, but I'm sure treatments there are incredible too. So there is an adults only pool called Oasis Pool. Um, it is a quiet pool deck. At both pools, there's poolside service options, um, luxury, soft loungers. The Oasis pool is an infinity edge pool. Um, it's beautiful and very relaxing. So when you are, when it is pouring, there are umbrellas available. Now, when we were leaving lunch, there weren't any, but we were able to send somebody out on a mission to get us down. <laughs> All right, we have made it to Explorer Island, or we're getting there. Um, but you'll see, there is actually a lazy river here at Four Seasons. So Four Seasons does have its own water park. And that's this, it's Explorer Island. So beautiful loungers all around, um, tons of palm trees, and an actual lazy river that you can float in all day. It's huge and winding all through this area, which is pretty darn cool. The lazy river is also not a basic lazy river. It has waterfalls throughout it. There's a few spray cannons and there's even a little rapid section. Not so exciting as to be scary, but might speed you along and be a little exciting. Right now we're passing by the Splash Zone, which is beautiful. It's themed like ruins and it features choreographed interactive fountains throughout it for your kiddos to play in. Uh, looks super fun. And then up here at the top of Explorer Island, you'll find kids for all seasons. This is a very exciting amenity here at Four Seasons for parents. This is a kids camp that is available and complimentary from 9 to 5 p.m. for ages 4 to 12. Uh, it features themed days and activities and crafts and you can even have your kid eat lunch for $35. On Saturdays, Explorer Island also has the Explorer Island Takeover which is from 5 to 8 p.m. for $75 uh, with kiddos and it includes dinner and a couple other things. I think a t-shirt but just a lot of interesting kiddo options. And there's some recreation that is not just for kids up here too, like billiards and foosball. This side of the resort also has sport courts, like a basketball court, as well as the peak rock climbing that you can do, and the drop water slides, which are two 242 foot water slides. Uh, one is open air and one is see-through. We're gonna try to get a better view of those once we get over to the family pool, which is also amazing. There's a rock wall, which is so cool. I used to love rock climbing when I was a kid. And here's that sport court including a little turf to play soccer. Interesting, beyond this gate is actually Four Seasons private residences. Four Seasons does offer um, private residence options for people, so that's what's beyond this gate. Part of the Golden Oak neighborhood, but also offered by Four Seasons. Uh, there is also the hideout, which is a game room. Hi, how are you? Pretty good. Oh my gosh. Man, I wish we had time to do this. I'm so good at Pac-Man. Mario Kart, they've got video games. I could destroy Fry and Pac-Man. And 
And here at the bottom of the stairs, you'll see the very beautiful and exciting family pool. So as you can see, there is a zero entry here. Um, this is a 7,500 square foot pool, and it also has an underwater audio system. It's right on the lake, which is cool, so you can look out on the lake, and you can expect to see resort activities like happy hours, gaming competitions, and live music. On Saturdays at 12 and 5 p.m., they offer dive-in movies where there are movies by the pool and you can watch from in the pool. And Four Seasons recommends a whole day on Explorer Island to experience everything that the water park has to offer. As you can see, after the rain, it's pretty sparse out here and earlier. There were people out here, but the pool was not crowded at all. There are some of those cabanas for rent over here as well and loungers. Now we are exploring right now, but you might notice that we did check out earlier. This is checkout day. Checkout is at noon and it was super easy. I actually checked out in the Four Seasons app, but you can do so by texting the front desk, um, by stopping by the front desk, pretty much anything you can check out that way. Um, I also just called Bell Services right before we checked out, literally seven minutes before, and they were at the room right when we needed to be out of the room to pick up our bags and bring them to storage for us. And when we go to pick up MS car, they'll be able to just bring the bags around to the front and we basically don't even have to set their bags because they're just gonna load them right in the car, which is amazing. Um, but checkout is at noon. So then keep in mind, you don't wanna miss it, but that's a later checkout than most theme park area hotels, which I love a later checkout, I'll tell you that. There's a pool over here as well that might be open if you come to the Four Seasons. It is currently completely flooded, but there's a fire pit and some like hanging hammock things and a bunch of interesting stuff to like play around and hang out with, but it is closed right now because uh, that whole pool deck is flooded. Come on, Florida, ruining all the fun. And that's Explorer Island, which actually a lot to explore. Probably took a good minute for us to walk around. Um, and overall, that's the Four Seasons. We've seen all the amenities they offer. Not all, but we've seen a lot of the amenities they offer. Um, we've seen the room, a lot of food, and uh, I think it's time to pass judgment on whether or not this place is worth the price. <laughs> Okay, we got gelato for our wrap up because we couldn't resist. It's from Lickety Split. It's so good. It's pretty really good gelato. But let's just talk a little bit about whether or not Four Seasons is worth it. Of course, this is a very expensive hotel. It's around $1,000 for a face room. The Disney perks of staying here are going to be more limited. Mostly, your perk is going to be that 30 minute early entry. Otherwise, you're sticking with Four Seasons transportation, which isn't as good as Disney transportation just because it doesn't come as often. And uh, it's on like a very set schedule and it doesn't drop you as close to Magic Kingdom. But that said, it's also on a luxury motor coach. So that's really the only Disney perk to be concerned about. But let's talk pros and cons. Number one pro, all of us agree, the service. Oh my goodness, oh, hands down. I've not felt this doted on in a really long time. It feels really good how like prioritized we are, taking how like doted on we are, how taken care of. Like um, it's just, it's, in, it's perfect service. It's service you would expect paying this price and service you would expect of a luxury hotel. I think um, it's really important too to know that it wasn't just us, it was all of the families around us. Everyone was receiving this kind of service and you could see that as you spend the day here. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Another pro is just the amenities. Because you're spending so much money, you're getting a lot more amenities here. Um, and you're like, oh well, you're spending the money to get them. Yes, but you can spend this much money and not get those amenities. Yeah. Really That's easily nice. in Disney World. Mm -hmm. So. Definitely the amenities, the water park, the pools, the spa, the fact that you get access to the spa, um, but just what the room contained and what you could request for the room. The amenities are definitely a pro. Our final pro is going to be the food. Uh -huh. Yeah, definitely. Um, everything we ate here was fantastic. I would say the worst meal we had was the lobby bar, and it was yeah. great. Bet you know what I'm going to say for cons. Yes. Go ahead. I thought you yes. You've got it That's right. It is the price. This hotel is dramatically expensive, egregiously expensive. Um, this is the same price as Grand Floridian at club level for a standard room here, of course. I think it offers more than Grand Floridian club level does if you actually compare the two. Um, but just really, really expensive. This is, uh, this is a luxury hotel chain. It is not meant to cater to everybody and it certainly does not. Another con we're gonna do a hybrid is that this hotel does not have that Disney feel. Obviously there's character dining, but other than that, you wouldn't know you were at Disney World besides a few like Mickey-shaped cushions in the lobby. Some art yeah, some, some art. Like you just wouldn't know. 
which is fine if that's not what you're looking for. But if you're looking for that Disney luxury, Grand Florian is going to be the right choice for you. If you want to be able to walk to the park, if you want your restaurants to have the Disney flair, uh, if you want like more Disney perks, Grand Floridian is going to be something that is more of an option for you, just not true luxury like this. So that part does kind of depend on what you want. Overall, we had a spectacular day. This is probably, I will say, the best day I've gotten to do with you. It has been incredible. I've reviewed every single Disney World hotel on our YouTube channel, and you can certainly find options that are a nice balance of budget-friendly and high-quality amenities. If you like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe. And now go watch our tour of a two-bedroom suite at Disney's Riviera Resort. We'll see you there.